I'm going to briefly talk about how to create a community in your Google Apps account. Uh, for this to work, you must have Google Plus enabled by the domain administrator, so your school board or university. So if you scroll down, you'll notice that um, Google Plus is enabled for me. So the, uh, the, the box here where all the programs are now included. So you click on uh, Google Plus, it will open. So how do I create a community? So I come over here, your home, and go to communities. You will notice on the right at the top a create community button. So I'm going to start clicking here. And there are two options. I'm, I'm in a Google Apps domain, meaning um, probably with a school board or university. Uh, and what happens is we have the option to have this restricted only to our domain. Now we can choose it to be available outside, so public, uh, the public can either join. If you choose not restricted, you can still have it by invitation only. In our case, we're going to try with this one, so it's only going to be for our students. Um, so open within teacherportal.ca or private within teacherportal.ca. So I'm going to write private. What do you want to call it? I'll call it my online class discussion. Um, one, this is very similar, by the way, communities to what you would find uh, in Edmodo. Uh, the reason why I prefer it is because I already have uh, my Google Apps account set up. So if I wanted to set up Edmodo again, that would be a whole different process and training for the students. And therefore, I just think it's easier when you have something already set up. So so finish setting up your community here. Uh, you could write some taglines if you wanted people to be able to search it. Uh, go get a photo. And it's pretty important, by the way, the photo. I would encourage you to get a photo that's representative of whatever the discussion is. I'm going to just uh, take a random photo here. Because visually, it'll show up in your viewer's panel. And it kind of makes a difference. If you don't have anything there, it's not as appealing. That is good enough. Okay, get a community photo. Sorry, it's been too long. Um, from this step, you can immediately invite your students. Now, usually I do a Google spreads or a spreadsheet, and I would just put the names here and then write that uh, join my community. And down here, I would put their name. So I'll just add myself here from another domain, um, which maybe it won't be allowing me to do that actually because it's restricted. So I won't, I won't really send it to anybody. But I click send and there it is. So did the image upload yet? Um, two things about Google. Let's just go get the image. Oh, there it is. Okay. Notifications on. I usually turn this off because every time some, but if you were wanting to know every time a student posted, you would get an email or a notification up here in the corner saying somebody's posted on your Google community. I usually turn that off because I find that if I have 30 students in a class and you post three times, it's quite a few notifications. So I'm going to leave it off. And um, there are a few things here that uh, we need to start doing. And the uh, first one is edit the community. Usually I would write a paragraph. Uh, on uh, what I would want to put, and I click on the little gear icon like I just did. I would write um, online on going discussion for our class. All right, you could add a link to a website and, and so on. You could even create more categories. Uh, for example, you want to post lesson plans, etc., on there. It's not going to do that. Let's click save. And there you go. So um, a few words about what's available in uh, Google Communities. You have the option to type text like my idea is oops, my idea is blah 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 blah. Uh, you can include a link to a website, a YouTube video, or another event that you want to share. Click share. And what happens is everybody in the community sees this. Now they have the option to comment on this. And um, 
that's kind of the whole point. It creates a, a closed space where everybody can comment and, uh, you know, just have a discussion in an online forum. One thing I also do occasionally with my uh, online discussions is I select moderators. So students who are also responsible for uh, keeping track of what people are posting. And this really creates a dynamic environment where students feel like they have some ownership. And I highly recommend it. Give me one second. So to make somebody a moderator, a student or somebody in your course, it could be anybody, you go to manage members. And over here, you will usually, if I had several people invited, like my whole class would be 30 pictures. And you click over here. And I would write, sent down from owner to moderator. Or step down, and in, in the case of a student, they would all be members, so I could step them up to be a moderator. I highly recommend that. It really makes things a lot more dynamic. Let's go back, show you two other neat features that are built into uh, Google Communities. Uh, you have the ability to uh, create an event within the Google Community. So events are is another separate section of Google uh, Plus, but you can build them right into. Uh, you click right over here and uh, create an event for that community. So back, so maybe you're having a special uh, uh, trip uh, or, uh, happening and you wanna include it in the Google community. Another really cool thing is you can have a hangout with the community. So you basically just click over here and you will be able to set up a hangout. So if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment and uh, enjoy.